The 36 Hours Short Story English It was a soft, smooth morning. Rain this last night had made the weather very chilly and I was walking down the narrow tree-lined street into the just rising life-giving heart and body warming sun I was a few kilometers from my hometown in the central part of India I was going to meet my mother's brother at his farmhouse him and his family he was my uncle I suppose but I had never found him that he spent his money on me yes of course uh, but that only when I was a guest at his house and there used to be several guests there on any particular day and of course he spent his money on so much else his farm his cars his cronies his bribes his dogs but that was all he did spend his money never himself he was a good man yes but only minus his snobbery he seemed to care less condescend more but here I was on my first leave from my job in the Gulf it had been two years since I saw him and his family last his kids my cousins loving as they were had come to see me at the airport and now it was my turn to come to them I had missed them these last several months I had no siblings no father either all I had was my mother and these few cousins I had to see them and to get to know them to catch up on the life these years had put between us mother was not well enough to travel so I took a 36 hours leave from her and arrived here on an old rickety SRTC bus SRTC State Road Transport Corporation bus I got down at the village bus stop and was now walking towards the farmhouse wondering whether it was all that good an idea coming this early in the day uncle was never an early riser but perhaps the kids would be up their schools open early it was as I had suspected only the two school going children and some servants could be seen on the grounds the kids saw me and came running they were so excited we hugged and kissed to our hearts content and started walking towards the kitchen that being the only section awake and alive as I entered the palatial kitchen with the two under my wing I saw a new maid uniformed and starched getting the breakfast ready helping her was a young man just into his adulthood as I went closer he turned around and my heart skipped a beat Manish I said he had been working here for some time now when I had visited my uncle before leaving for the Gulf he had been a new arrival 
I was here for two weeks then and he had been hired just a few days before my visit. He was cute. He was cute. And I was desperately in need of someone to love. One look at him and I knew that he had to be the one. But he was too young. I could not bring myself to make any advances towards him. I was prepared to wait. To wait until he came of age. Some people are precious enough to be awaited. And it seemed to me that he was one. But this I know now. Then I was merely nice to him, the way I always am towards any household employee. Most get accustomed to my way of functioning and find nothing special in it. He was different. He felt my difference. My presence always seemed to bring the best out of him. Was that a reality or my imagination? I know not. But what is certain is that I was just a wee bit nicer to him than I was to the others. He must have noticed that, as also my wandering eyes which always sought him and latched on to him at the first available opportunity and stayed there as long as his did not meet mine. But whichever way it was, I was young enough and naive enough to not know what was happening. I had had little sexual experience and that was limited to mere play even that once in a very, very long while. Before I knew, my two weeks were up and I left. But before I left, I did find time to meet him in a secluded corner to hold his hands and bid him goodbye. And then I came to the Gulf, Arabian Gulf. Persian Gulf. All memories, all desires, just as all happiness and all suffering, if left to their own devices, evaporate in time. And what is left is a vague feeling of mild discontent. Life settles at a point in comfort just below the one desired. And also for me, then, love and its Siamese twin, sex, were not the driving force they are for me today. I'm ashamed to say I forgot all about him. Well, two years later, I went on my first leave from my job in the Gulf and Manish, I said, he had changed, and a hell of a lot. The softness of his boyhood charm had given way to the firm seductiveness of an adult in the making. He was recognizable, but just barely so. Impulsively, I stepped forward and hugged him. Only later, on seeing the surprise in my cousin's eyes, did I realize that I had done something which was not the done thing. On his part, Manish got embarrassed enough to fix his gaze on the polished marble floor and not reply to even the customary, how do you do? The day passed off in answering the barrage of questions everybody had for me. How's work? What are the hours? How's life generally in the Gulf? Do I cook or eat out? Blah, blah, blah. 
in the night when my uncle came back from his office his usual routine took precedence over the upset of my arrival we got to the dinner table at the usual nine ate in silence and he put a masala hindi movie on the video at 10 sharp everybody had gathered in the big hall the residents the guests the servants the pilgrimage in absentia to the holy bollywood started these hindi movie moguls are a very loving and loyal lot if one of them finds a new story all others pay their tributes to him by remaking it a hundred times over each time with a new name of course nobody is perfect minor variations always creep in sometimes the cast is different sometimes costumes sometimes even both since I had seen this year's movie I was not very keen on it my attention was wandering suddenly I got this funny feeling of being watched I looked around everybody was gaping at the screen I too joined in again I got the same feeling and again the same result probably full of my self-importance I was imagining things but at the back near the door I saw Manish standing curiously enough he was looking not at the screen but down at his feet I resumed watching the movie but sat in such a way as to be able to see the door in the corner of my eye I sensed a change and looked back I was just in time to see his gaze move down this was repeated a few times and I was left wondering could this be for real I mumbled something to my aunt sitting next to me about needing some fresh air she was anyway unaware of my existence I slinked out at the door I stopped for a moment and told the clear star studded sky that I needed some fresh air very slowly I started walking towards the rear garden as I entered I heard a faint rustle behind me. I knew what to expect. Are Manish? Acha hua to maage. Main to bore ho raha tha. Oh Manish, good you came. I was really getting bored. Probably that was not needed. We both knew why we were there. I went closer to him, my heart pounding wildly. I put one hand on his shoulder, then the other. He took the final step and we were in each other's arms, hugging and kissing passionately. This lasted a few minutes and then somebody from inside called out his name. He had to go. I waited for a long time in the chilly winter night. He probably could not get away so tired eventually I went back in time to see the police arrive and take away the villains and of course to see the hero and heroine go through the final preparations for living together happily ever after as people started drifting away to their bedrooms I chose to move my bed to the veranda, hoping fervently that he would come in the night. Excuse me. After everybody was asleep and I was successfully acting asleep, I felt a presence near me. Then a hand tenderly touched my face lips soon followed softly yet firmly I caught hold of him 
and guided him inside the rug I had wrapped around me and pulled it over our heads. You are awake? I thought you were asleep. How could I sleep without you? I was trying to get away, but it took long for everybody to get to sleep. I thought I'll just come and touch you before I went away to sleep myself. Who's going to let you go away now? Who's going now? And nobody did. We hugged and kissed and kissed and hugged until... Until I heard the door to the veranda open. Someone was coming out. I whispered furiously to Manish, Stick to me. Stick to me like you are a part of my body and do not move a hair. He did as I said. The door closed again. There were footsteps outside. Someone had come out and was now walking towards our bed. Mr. Footsteps stopped near our bed. The rug was thick but the outline of the person sleeping must have been visible. I felt Manisha's heartbeat quicken, as did mine. I waited for Mr. Footsteps to call me, or perhaps pull the rug. Both actions were socially acceptable. He would lose nothing. What about us? Manish would lose his job, for sure. I did not want that. I felt a panic sweeping over me. What about me? What would happen to me? Perhaps I would be declared persona non grata. But that did not matter. I could live with that. What I did not want was Manish losing his job. God, do something. And excuse me. For a change, he did. I suddenly realized that now I too was earning well enough to employ Manish myself. And why employ? We could even share a life together. I think God told me that. I started preparing the speech I would deliver on being discovered. Speech about the greatness of love about love at first sight, about my commitment to Manish. I found myself wishing that he would pull the rug and thereby the curtain. At least I should not then have to love in secrecy, this way or that way. I wanted something to happen. Nothing did. Excuse me again. After what seemed like an interminable period of time, Mr. Footsteps retreated, deciding that no action was warranted, or perhaps the thickness of the rug carried the day. We were, for now, safe. The door opened again and the footsteps faded inside. We resumed resumed our kissing but that was all i could allow myself i still saw him largely as the kid that he was before i had gone abroad the severe chill turned into stifling heat the rooster congratulated us and went back to sleep we still had not got tired of kissing each other I heard the faint call to prayer emanating from the faraway mosque. It was morning. We were jolted out of our dreams. Somebody might wake up soon for the prayers and then it would be difficult for Manish to get away. The prayer room was just across the veranda. So he went. Or rather, I forced him to. He would still sit 
by the side of my bed and keep touching my face. But before he went, we agreed to meet in the afternoon in the kids' bedroom after they went off for the second session of their classes. Everybody else would be busy with their siesta. I spent the rest of the morning waiting for the afternoon to come. I was excited and yet apprehensive. The false security of darkness had lifted and light of the day had made me see much farther than my immediate desires. Lighted as they were, night and day, by the fire of my love. What would happen if the precise nature of our relationship were to be known? He would lose his job and I, my family. True, Manish would have problems, but for how long? He was a hard-working and dedicated young man. He would eventually find another job. But I was born in this family. How would I find another one? The crisis was new to me. I had never faced the prospect of losing my relatives, my family. They were conservative, ultra-conservative, but they cared. Deep down, they did. And I cared for them. And the bottom line, they were my only emotional links with life. Could I afford this severance? Even if they accepted me at a later date, would things be the same? Would I be able to build up again the tenderness that I share with them, that I shared with them then? No, things could never be the same. A couplet, a doha by Rahim echoed in my mind. Rahiman dhaga prem ka mat todo chatikai. Rahiman dhaga prem ka mat todo chatikai. Tute te phir na jode. Tute te phir na jode jode gaat padi jai. O Rahim, do not break the thread of love. Once broken, it cannot be rejoined, and if rejoined, it is only with a knot. Should I risk breaking these ties? Certainly, love of one particular person is important in life, but can it replace the familial ties? These, which in the subcontinent at least, are the very proof of a man's existence. But was it merely the question of the love of one person versus the love of many? Or was it the question of principles, my principles, my Weltanschauung, which dictates that liberty must be a fundamental way of life? I demanded and will always demand for myself, indeed for all, not just the political freedom, the freedom to act, the freedom to vote, but also the freedom to think, the freedom to believe, the freedom to desire, the freedom to love, the freedom from rules, from traditions, customs, conventions, from social expectations, from legal necessities, from all things human which keep one from being oneself which keep one from desires which, if fulfilled, hurt no one, but add to one's happiness, and thus add to the sum total of all human happiness, an admirable desire in its own right. Excuse me. <coughs> I decided that I had to take the risk. We met in the afternoon. Young Manish came to me as no one had before or since. His heart, his mind, his body, nothing stayed away from me. He seemed to desire me with all his soul. 
and yet he was so shy about getting anything done to his body or himself that I was reduced to being a cooperative onlooker. Still, I loved him. I loved him because for a change someone had loved me for my own sake. For the sake of the love that I had for him. Not for my body, for he had so many better ones available. Not for my youth, for he was younger and in every way more desirable than I was. He made me see what was possible in love and he spoilt my life for me. For now, in every man I love, I look for Manish. Oh yes, I forgot to mention, a few days later, in a car crash, he died.